One second. All right, so what is this little thing here? Um, this is a band that goes around your wrist. Um, it's bendy. There's a little connector here. And basically what it does is it tracks your life. So the philosophy behind it is you're supposed to track how you sleep and you're supposed to track what you eat and how much activity you do. And this is in hopes of better knowing your body. Well, um, I figured I'd try this out last week. I got a gym membership and uh, it looked pretty cool. I recently backed a, um, a Kickstarter for something called the Embrace Plus, which is slightly related, but kind of not. And um, yeah, so I wanted to try this out first and do a review on it to tell you guys about it because uh, I'd seen it in Best Buy and I was like, yeah, you know, that's kind of cool. So it retails for about $150 and there's a couple of pros and cons to it. So, the pros. Um, the main thing that I got it for, I wanted to see how I was sleeping. There's a mobile app that pairs up with it. Uh, oh, damn. I'm actually recording with my phone. I'll put up some screenshots in post. Uh, whenever I first got it, I mainly wanted it so that I could track my sleep patterns. I wanted it to tell me how I was sleeping, when I was engaging in deep sleep, and different things like that. And I'm not too much concerned with what I'm eating, although I probably should be, and I'm not too much concerned with the amount of activity I get. <clears throat> so, the pros of it is that, you know, it's, it's good to have that reminder uh, on your wrist. Oddly enough, a uh, $150 reminder, I mean, it could have been like a what would Jesus do bracelet or something like that. But it reminds me to uh, stay active and make the, uh, the good decisions. It has a little inactivity meter, so that if I've been sitting around for too long, I can set it to go ahead and vibe my wrist and basically lets me know to get up and start moving around. Um, one thing uh, that I don't like about it, well, I guess I listed most of the pros. Let me go to the cons. The cons are it doesn't track my sleep period completely. <clears throat> Last night, I had it track my sleep. I got eight hours of sleep. It registered me as only being in a sleep period for five hours and 44 minutes. Now, if it was detecting my sleep periods uh, manually, you know, like just through the, the rhythm of my heart and things like that, okay, I'd cut it a little break, but there's this little button right here. I don't know if you guys can see it. I'm going to hold it down real quick, and right here, you're going to see a little icon Okay, you see that little blue moon? That means that it's in sleep mode now. So I hold it down, now it's in day mode. The difference between these two is the sleep mode obviously is telling, is telling it that you're asleep. Okay, so you hit the sleep mode button and it's going to start tracking all your sleep data. Something that I didn't like about this though is that if I'm telling it manually when I'm going to sleep and things like that, why is it still missing half of my sleep period? Because I'm turning it back to awake whenever I wake up. I don't know if it's just assuming that I forgot to hit the button six hours into my sleep cycle and I woke up or something like that, or if I'm just a restless sleeper or what. But the tracking for the sleep wasn't wasn't the great wasn't the greatest. Um, another thing that I really didn't like about it was uh, this. Okay, this little charger port here. Let me let me show you. This little charger port uses a headphone cable, if you can't see. Uh, you pop it in your phone, you turn on the app, and then you hit sync. Well, that's kind of shitty. I mean, you'd think that in all of this bulk, they could fit like a little Bluetooth interface or something like that, or maybe even something that would automatically sync with my phone. Now, the battery life is currently 10 days on this per charge. Uh, the charge took about, I don't know, about three hours. Okay, so... I've been wearing this for about a week and a half. Um, I'm not too convinced if I'm going to be keeping it. It's not. It's not the best thing. What, like day one, I figured, oh man, this thing is awesome. Oh, this is great. And day two, I woke up and I'm like, wait a minute, what? What does this thing do again? And day three, I'm like noticing some of the functions. And day four, I'm just like, why? Why am I even tracking some of this stuff? <laughs> So, the big issue for me is there's lots of apps on my phone that will do this for me. Um, this thing, although it looks waterproof and stuff like that, it's not waterproof. <clears throat> I went ahead and got the protection plan and everything at Best Buy. Oh, for those of you that are probably uh, thinking that I didn't buy this, 
uh, here's the box. My receipt is inside from Best Buy. So those of you who think that you know I'm doing this review for free, I'm not. Um, yeah, it's just if I had to do it all over again, I probably wouldn't get it. The reason why I really wanted it was because I wanted to track my sleep patterns. I had a suspicion that you know I could do a lot better if I if I knew my sleep more intimately if I could if I could sleep more effectively if that makes sense but this machine doesn't even make heads or tails of my sleep patterns um, another thing is the the eating section of it okay so on the box here it says sleep move eat so under sleep it says understand your sleep and wake up refreshed move measure daily activity and calories burned eat Learn which foods help you feel your best. Well, the move one, indeed, um, it tracks how many calories I'm burning and things like that until I got on the bike. Uh, I ride my bike a lot. I actually rode about 20 miles, and this thing only registered me for about 60 steps, which, hmm, that one kind of kicked me in the ass. I just wanted to see what the stats were going to be on it. But uh, the, the function that really kind of had me a little bit miffed was the, the eat function. Okay, so you have to enter in the foods that you eat manually. That means, like, for every bite of whatever you take or uh, whatever meal you make, you have to plug it in manually. You have to program that stuff in there. And it's it's a little bit tedious to me, you know. I'm not, I'm not going to pick up my phone right before I eat every time and record what I'm putting in there. And it requires Internet access because their database of foods is crowdsourced. And pretty much any old Joe can go in there and type pizza and then define your new item called pizza and then whatever arbitrary amount of calories and stuff like that is in there. To me, that was kind of flawed because, well, for example, whenever I typed in sushi, about 400 different little items popped up and they all had varying uh, amounts of calories. Like one, one said it was three calories, another one said it was like... I don't know, like 96 calories per roll, and I, it was really, I don't know, they could have they could have implemented that better. I don't expect this thing to automatically know what I'm eating and uh, put it in put it in the app automatically, but I mean, it could have been a little bit more intuitive. It could have, I don't know, had like a menu system or something like that. I don't know, I'm getting off track. But, okay, so that part uh, kind of loses some practicality points. All right, so... On the back here, uh, let me, let's just talk about the packaging a little bit. Okay, so they had a sizing guide that comes attached to it. You put your wrist in there, and if your wrist fits in there, then it should work. Okay, so this is the, uh, the, I believe it was large. Yeah, there's the L right there. It's the large. So my wrist fits perfectly in here. But as you can see, my wrist stretches out the band a little bit. Um, I don't know if you guys can see. But if, if you're like me and you have big wrists, uh, this thing is going to catch on everything. Um, I've already had it like pulled off my wrist just walking down the hallway and accidentally, accidentally catching a doorknob. It doesn't take that much force to just pull it off. And uh, whenever it does, this little end cap is going flying. Um, that's, that's another little gripe I had about it. This end cap really isn't on there that well. Uh, for something that is not waterproof and for something that I probably can't replace, I don't know, that little end cap's probably like 25 bucks or something. But uh, it sure is easy to fly off. That kind of miffed me about it. So just to recap it real quick, if I had to do it all over again, I probably wouldn't get this. Um, it's it's made by a manufacturer that does the, the Bluetooth earpieces. They should probably stick to that because this, although I could see it being useful for people who are like marathon runners or something like that, uh, that's great and all. But if you're doing any other type of physical activities other than running and meticulously planning out your meals and tracking your sleep, then it's probably not the best device. Uh, the sensors on there aren't really the best. Sometimes I could be sitting at my desk and it'll register me doing a couple hundred steps just from typing, and it's it's great, but the novelty is kind of worn off. And for it to for the novelty to wear off about a week into it, that's a little bit steep of an investment just for a week's entertainment. I don't know, $150 is a little steep. I got the protection plan that was 20 bucks extra. All in all, you're in for like 170 Uh Depending on which Best Buy you go to, some of them have different colors. Mine only had this gray color in large. 
So, um, yeah, I hope this helps you guys out. If you still want to get one, go ahead and get one. I mean, it's, it's only $150, but to me that's a lot right now, so... I'm probably going to be returning this or selling it on eBay or Amazon. So, yeah, guys, that's been my review of the Jawbone Up. Uh, I'm going to give this one a 2 out of 5. It's just not for me. So, thanks for watching, guys.